Today I'll be installing K3S and run a simple open fast function really just to connect to DigitalOcean MongoDB. And although everything is very well documented on K3S documentation and there is also an open fast workshop that really walks you through the entire process. However, I still did face some problems installing these on my virtual machine. So I just wanted to do a quick run through, although it's going to take about 30 minutes. But let me actually just give you an overview of my virtual machine. It's an E2 medium on Google Cloud and it's an Intel x86. But I've also ran and tested this on ARM machines. So um, I'll tell you where it's different for our machine as I walk you through. So first we want to install K3S and if you come to K3S documentation and to the quick start guide, it's going to give you a script to install K3S and how you can join your worker node. So you really just have to run the script. However, um, instead of just pasting this, I will actually want to pass some configuration. So if you actually come to the K3S uh, configuration options, it tells you different ways to add your configuration. So you can just pass them as flags like down here. So I'll just use the flag to um, add a token as such. So it is as simple as that. So once you do kubectl get all, you'll see some services and deployments. Um, and wait a little more, you'll see all the pods being created. So you'll see five different pods being created. So that's all you need to do for your control plane. And now we have a worker virtual machine that we want to join. So back to quick start guide. I'm just going to paste this, copy this line here and paste it here. Uh, but before I run it, I want to actually specify the endpoint for the K3S control plane. So if you're using virtual machine like me, you can just paste the internal IP of your control plane virtual machine. So I'll just paste that there and run it. So that's really just all you need to do to start your K3S agent, which is like the worker node in K3S. So I'm going to close the worker virtual machine and let me just run pods dash o wide again and we'll see one of these pods running on worker nodes as such so k3s is done now let's actually move on to the openfast so if you come to openfast workshop lab one it's going to tell you how you need to install docker and such so look for the documentation on the docker website and you'll come across this website where you can install docker engine and um, choose the linux distribution that you're using i'm using debian so scroll down a little bit and install using the repository so you just have to set up repository and then install your Docker. Um, so since this is just a copy and paste, I'll fast forward. So once that is done installing, we can confirm Docker is installed by running Docker. So once we have Docker, now we are back in the workshop and you will have to install the OpenFast CLI just by pasting this line here. So just paste that right there. 
and confirm your fast CLI is installed. Once you're done, um, now you need to configure a registry by doing a Docker login. And that's because later you will have to deploy your function to your repository. Um, so you can do Docker login, but for Google Cloud Virtual Machine, you need to do sudo. So you can just specify your name and password to log in. And then you have to specify this variable by um, passing in your Docker Hub username as such. So just copy this here. And I'm going to do echo, uh, paste it there inside a single quote, and just pass in my username and close the single quote and append that to uh, my dot profile file. And then I'll have to run source to save that. And now when I actually echo the open fast prefix, we'll now see the username being printed out. So we are done with lab one, let's move on to lab 1b. So 1b is about setting up your Kubernetes cluster, but because we've already done that, we can skip that and scroll down all the way down to deploying OpenFast. So in order to install OpenFast, um, you first need Arcade. Um, so you can just copy this line here, paste it, and you will see the Arcade has been installed. And you can simply do Arcade install OpenFast um, to install OpenFast. But when you actually run this, you'll face um, this error saying this uh, connection refused. So there are a few workarounds for this. The reason this is happening is because for K3S, your cube config is actually um, inside this specific path dot yaml. Um, actually you do sudo yep so it's in that path so you can actually pass or copy and paste that to cube config or you can specify your cube config path to that path rancher and so on so there are two different ways to go about this but um and sometimes for some virtual machines, you have to run this um, as a root user. And that was the case for um, the VM on Google Cloud. So it depends. But I'll run this as a root user. And I'll do kubectl config view raw. And then pass that into the cube config file as such. So once I do that, when I actually print the content out, I'll have what I need in there. So I can do arcade install OpenFast as such. But you might actually come across another error saying a permission denied to this path um, dash TMP. And just one workaround that I found online was actually remove this sticky bit by just um, pasting this line here. So after pasting that line, I'm gonna do install OpenFast again. And that's gonna install fine. So once I'm done with that, um, as it says here, you have to turn it back on. So I'll paste this second line here as such. So once you're done with installing, it's gonna say how you have to forward the gateway to your machine. So let's actually run this first line here. And it's gonna say gateway successfully rolled out. So now you have to port forward uh, your port 8080 to the gateway and run it as a background process. 
So once you run that, it's going to say it's forwarding from port 8080 to 8080. So what this is doing is um, forward any traffic that's coming to your uh, IP at port 8080 to the gateway port 8080. So once that is running, you actually have to open a new connection. So I'm going to open a new window as such. And while that is loading, um, let me come back to the workshop, the OpenFest workshop. So I've done the rollout status. I've done the port forwarding. The next thing you have to do is specify the OpenFast URL. And it says populate as above, meaning populate this with the URL of the gateway. And I'm running this locally, so I'll just have to paste it. Um, that port 8080 as such. So what I'm going to do is echo inside a single quote and specify the URL of your my gateway and append it to the dot profile and save it. So now when I print print it out it's it works so now that I've done that I will have to retrieve the password from the secret and then pass it into fast CLI, fast CLI login to work with the fast CLI command so I'm gonna copy this line here but depending on how you're doing it you might need to run it as a root user so I'll add a sudo there and once that's done I'm gonna pass this into the fast CLI login so once you do that you'll be able to run the fast CLI list without a problem so we already did this we passed it into our profile so we can move on to lab 2 and lab 2 is about testing things out using the UI portal and then deploying and learning about the CLI invoking a function which we'll do later and monitoring the dashboard on Grafana but I'm not using any of these right now so I'm going to skip to lab 3 so lab 3 is really um, creating a new function so you can refer to lab 3 or you can refer to this documentation on the official OpenFast um, website where it tells you how you can create and build your function. So there are three different commands, build, push, and deploying your function. But you can just run the single command to automate all of those in a single command. Yep. Um, but that's the case for running on Intel x86. If you're actually running on ARM machine, click this build function and scroll all the way down. It's going to tell you how you can um, build and deploy for um, the functions on ARM machine. So you will have to run this command and do a fast CLI publish with this platform's flag and then you can deploy your function and so on. Um, so that's the case for ARM machine, but we're gonna use fast CLI up. But before we actually do a fast CLI up, we will have to create a new function. So if you look here, you can do a fast CLI new, specify the language, or this is your template that you'll have to pull from the store and then pass in the prefix uh, specifying your Docker username. So come back to the virtual machine. You can do fast CLI template store list to see different templates available in the store. And for this demo, as I mentioned, I'll be using Golang to really just 
connect to a DigitalOcean MongoDB. So I will need to use fast CLI template, store pool golang HTTP. So once you pull that from the store, you will see a template directory and inside the template directory, you will see the templates or um, relevant templates that's, um, that you just pulled. And if you're using Golang for your function, there is a blog post doing a deep dive into Golang for OpenFast functions. And I'll put a link to this um, blog post as well in the description box for your reference. So now that we have the template, we can do fast CLI new specify the template golang http and specify the prefix which is the username of your docker hub and um, i'm going to name this test dash mongo db so once you run that and you will see how you have a single dot yaml file that looks like this um, specifying the gateway and the handler. So this is the directory that we have here. So if we look into test MongoDB, we have the go mod, go sum and the handler.go where we will be actually defining our function inside. So I'll cd into test mongodb and edit this handler.go file. Um, I'm not going to be using any of this here. Um, but in order to actually connect to mongodb, we need to use the mongo go driver. So if you come here, it's going to tell you how you can make a connection to a mongodb endpoint and different commands to interact with the database itself so i've already created a mongodb database on DigitalOcean. so it's really simple you can just create your own database and it's going to give you the username password and the host um, which you can use to connect to so coming back here, I will actually delete all of this and I already have um, the code to connect to the MongoDB database. So inside this apply URI, you see this endpoint that I have copied from here. Uh, one small difference is that I have passed in the username as well as the password followed by uh, at sign and then uh, the host of that MongoDB. So that would be the, the case if you are actually using DigitalOcean, but depending on how your endpoint to your MongoDB looks like, you would just pass that in as the options and you'll pass the options into um, the mongo.connect as a parameter and then it's just going to do a client.ping to make sure that the connection is successful and the last part here is just a default message that was already here so this part is not important so as long as this uh, function actually returns us a 200 status okay we know that this function is working fine so i'm going to save that there but remember we just had some dependencies inside the function and we actually need to do a go mod tidy inside this directory so we are still inside this directory but i actually don't have go installed in this machine so i will have to install that in from the official go website real quick so I'm just going to click other downloads and since I'm running on AMD 64, I'm going to right click and copy the link address here. 
So let me actually go back to the parent directory and I will need to install wget and using wget I'll paste that link that I just copied from the go page and then uh, let me go back to the home page it's gonna tell you how you can unzip it so I'm just gonna copy that there and sudo as such so once that's run I just have to add this to my profile again just append it and then save it and when we do go version we can now see that go has been installed so let me actually go back into the test.mongodb directory now i can do go mod tidy and that's gonna install all the dependencies that i had and then i can do go build so once that has been built i'm gonna cd back out into the parent directory so this is the directory where i have the .yml file so now we can do fast sudo fast cli up dash f and specify the yaml file as such but you might actually get an error saying you need to run go fmt or go fmt i don't know how to pronounce it um, you will actually have to go back into your directory and run go fmt uh, on your handler.go and then I'm gonna do fast CLI up again so if you get an error saying unauthorized access run fast CLI login when you actually already did um, that's that has to do with running as a root user so um, when we actually did fast CLI login, we actually have to run it again with the sudo command and run that again. So now we can see the function has been deployed and we can really just test it using the curl command. And we can see we received a 200 status okay. So our function is running fine. That wraps up this tutorial. Thank you all for watching.